We got time for that. We we'll dead before it's finished updating. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to it. Daddy's got bills. Let's pay him. Let's go. Uh, uh, yeah. Here we go. We're gonna uh, come on up, y'all. We're just gonna wait for some people, some knuckleheads, to come out of the Barrett Sea. That's what we're gonna do. How y'all doing? Cold War sub, dude. Thanks for the seven month resub. Appreciate that. Music is a bit loud. Well, should be good now. Still feeling the jacuzzi? Um, no, I changed the water out a few months ago, and I'm the only person that uses it. So, um, yeah, I haven't changed out in a while. So, I'll probably change it out in October. That that'd be about six months. It really depends on how much you use it. Like, I always shower before I get in the hot tub, and then I always, you know, keep the chlorine up to date. So, and just making sure that chemistry is good is all you got to worry about. And the chemistry is real easy. It's not, you don't have to be a chemist. They make it simple for people like me. Yeah. All right, so we got a new contact bearing 278, designate CR1. No surface duct. That's not good. Let me turn this down even more. Someone said music's still loud. There we go. All right, let's fight. Let's go. On sonar, lost contact. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Here we go. How y'all doing today? Everybody good? Holy shit! Cold bar sub dude, thank you for the thousand biddies. Yes, yes. Yeah, the the flooring. Um, so here's what I'm doing, and. Uh, so I've got this gym. It's pretty amazing. I, I really like it, but I'm not done Con with it. Sonar, new contact I need to add one, three four, more pieces five, of kit to it. Sierra, but in one. order to protect the floor that is just concrete right now, sonar, I got to put a rubber padding bearing. down. Zero, nine, two, Do, put, putting the rubber zero, padding down two. is not a big deal. Getting the rubber padding down wall to wall and trim so it looks nice is a pain in the ass. Cutting those rubber tiles is... I don't want to say impossible, but very difficult. Very labor intensive Con cutting sonar. this. Sierra 2 is cavitating. Oh, we got some cavitation in the background. Let's see who's behind us, Sonar. Come right to zero four. Who's one, behind us? I. Couple couple guys. Alright, still the water depth here. Nineteen hundred feet. Let's go ahead and get ten degrees down on this bubble. Can I get out the way? Who do we have here? We have Half Sour Lizard. It says, glad, glad to finally catch a stream. Yeah. Hope I can help make your afternoon go by a little bit quicker. We're going to spend a couple hours here in the subs. Con, so world. Launch transient from Sierra oh, One. Man, someone's trying to shoot. All right, so we're just going to counter fire on that. Shoot. Con, so launch transient from Sierra we're One. Go, uh, torpedo Con, so launch transient from Sierra One. We're going to go full torpedo evasion from that. Passing 700 feet. Gone fire control. We've lost the wire. We lost the wire at 20 knots. Let's go a little bit deeper here. Passing 800 feet. Get down close to close to a thousand feet here. Passing nine hundred feet. It's gonna reload that tube. <sighs> what do we have here? I imagine the carpet cutting would do the trick. Um. Oh yeah, one of those carpet cutting knives, but you'd really have to work at it. Yeah. The spook, give me your old. NBC equipment. What? The spook gave you my old NBC equipment? I don't, I never had NBC equipment. What? What did he give you? You are the spook. Oh, okay. How accurate is the 688 propeller? Oh, well, we can't talk about that. Jesus. Get out of here. 
Uh, it's just a video game, man. It's kind of like people that talk about Tolkien. There's a lot of people that argue, especially with the new Tolkien movie coming out, Amazon made a, I guess, a video series, um, doing basically prequels to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And uh, a lot of people are arguing over how authentic it is and what's right and what's wrong. And what every one of those people arguing on both sides of the issue forget is that it's a work of fiction made up of a man who has more incomplete novels than complete novels in, in that world that he created. So while it is a pretty large piece of work, you know, arguing over it without him weighing in on it. When I say him, I'm talking about J.R.R. Tolkien weighing in on the argument. It's kind of a mute point. Okay. Oh boy, boy, boy. Let's go ahead and slow down to here. Make turns for five knots. Maneuvering eye. My point is, don't argue online with people you would never met and will never probably meet over a fictional series that you didn't write. That's, that's, that's my point. That's the takeaway there. Con sonar, new contact bearing. One, five, four, designated Sierra, three. Rounds, thanks for the ten months. Maxwell Mellon, thanks for the six months. Six, six months, yep, yep. Uh, who's this? Uh, Cove, thanks for gifting uh, a sub to Brock. Very cool. birds outside they're peeking in my window they like to land on my house and they do this little peek thing get out of here bird no one likes you I, I can hear active there it is okay let's put another weapon down that bearing okay. here we go we don't have a range sonar doesn't have well, Sonar's got a bearing, I guess. So we're just going to put a weapon in this direction. When am I going to turn alerts back on? Oh, no, the alerts broke. If you remember, they kept repeating. Yeah. Why would you want that? That's a terrible thing. It's like as soon as one alert went off, it would just repeat itself for the rest of the stream. So I fixed it by deleting it. Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Is it Wednesday already? Yes, it is. Happy Wednesday, P Pistol. That's what happens when you have a bebe. Zero, you lose track nine. of time. You lose track of what day of the week it is. Hey, fish, how's it going? Thanks for the bits, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, improve my gym. So, uh, it's not a community goal or anything. It's just any little bit that I make on uh, Twitch will pay for my new gym floor. So here's what I'm getting. I'm getting a, new, uh, a gym floor that is, uh, let's see, eight times two, so 16 feet in one direction. And then, uh, what is it, four times four, eight. Oh, it's 16 foot square. That's a lot. Con sonar, Sierra 2 is classified as that submerged submarine. 
Recon, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, one, last bearing, one, eight, two, contact faded. Reload it. Yep. So, uh, the rubber flooring in a gym, it's really hard to put down. Like, don't try to do it yourself. It's, uh, it's something that you want to hire a special specialist to do, which is what I'm doing. Because uh, it's something you only want to do it once. You don't want to do it once and then have to fix it. So, just just get it done right the first time. Con, sonar, lost that's kind of, that's kind of Sierra, my approach three, to things. It'll bearing, save you frustration, one, three, time, and money, eight, all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to call. Uh, I'm going to get this pro to come in and install it. And then what I'm getting is, is I'm getting a leg press machine uh, with uh, free weights on it, which is really cool. Hmm. What's going on here? So that's pretty good. Right, let's go tube one. Let's make a little tweaky tweak to that. Tweaky tweak. Roseder. Is it Rose Dwower? Weir? Rose de Weir? Thank you for Gone. the gifted Torpedo subs, my friend. Appreciate that. So yeah, leg press machine with some free weights. I think the floor will actually end up being more expensive than that. The, the flooring is real expensive. Once you got the flooring done, though, it's good to go. Con sonar, noise maker, bearing, one, God, four, this turn zero. is taking forever. 10 degree rudder, 10 knots. Yeah, we... Uh oh. Well, if it didn't see my decoy, it shouldn't see us. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Yay. Weapon acquired. Uh, Victor's running now. You running? Hey, Chief Engineer, how's it going? Laser lights? Yeah, yeah. I added the laser light. The laser lights are the least of the expense. You can get those cheap off Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did two workouts uh, yesterday, and oh my control. word. Weapon countermeasure homing. My arms are so sore today. I, I did whenever I do arms, I do back. Back and arms are the same day for me. And I, I thought, you know, what if let's try two a days? Because back in high school football days, you would do a workout in the morning, like real early, like six a.m. early. Go to school, and then in the afternoon after school, you wouldn't go home or get on the bus. Well, you'd get on the team bus and go to the field that was over by the middle school. Con sonar, noise maker, bearing one, four, five. And you would spend your afternoon over there on the field, and that's basically two a days. You do weights in the morning, and then drills in the afternoon. So I thought, you know what? Let's just try and do a two a day, where I do a you know a weightlifting strenuous, you know work up a sweat weightlifting Con, fire control, weapon session in the morning, and then do it again in the evening. Because in the evening, when the sun goes down, those little light laser lights look a lot of fun. It's a lot darker, right? So we did that, and uh, man, I killed myself. I mean, I blew my arms out last night. I, I was doing biceps. Um, I was doing 30-pound biceps, which for me is heavy. I usually curl the 20-pound easily. Sonar, noise maker, but I did 15 bearing, reps one, of 30 four, twice. Five. So six, 30 reps of 30. I just blew my, my biceps out. Con, fire control. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, right, Victor two, died. Bearing, one. Four, six, contact breaking up. So we still have two more actives out there. This is interesting. I'll tell you what, let's go this way. Come right to zero. Let's go nine, that three, way. No, I. So uh, yeah, leg press machine with plates. So when, anytime you get plates, you need what's called a plate rack or a plate mount, a plate tree. Uh, so I'm buying a plate tree. And I'm not going to get a lot of plates because I'm not going to lift a lot of weight, even with my legs. I'm not trying to get big. I'm just trying to get strong without size, right? And the way you do that is you do lightweight lots of times, okay? That's that's the key. It's very simple, you know. So I'm gonna get like uh, four 45 pound plates, uh, two 25 pound plates, and maybe two 10 pound plates, just to start, you know? And that'll be more than oh, enough, I think. No. Because the, the goal is, is don't put on so many plates you can barely move it. The goal is to put on enough plates that you can move it 15 times. And the 10 to 15 should be difficult. 
So one to ten, that kind of loosens you up, warms up your muscles. And then the last five are hard, harder, you know. And then you do that set three times with breaks between each set. And whenever I take a break, it's like two minutes. Uh, like I, I walk away from the machine, you know. I, I go, I go flirt with the girls over on the thigh machines. You know, maybe I, I turn the hot tub down a little bit so I can stay in it longer. You know, and then then I go back and I do more sets. Yeah. So anyway, so so I got a uh, a leg press machine is what I'm going to order. I haven't ordered it yet. Uh, a plate tree. Six plates? No, eight plates. Ooh, this will be kind of expensive. And then um, for dumbbells, I'm going to go ahead and get a dumbbell tree. Dumbbell stand. So they're not sitting on the floor. Just makes the gym cleaner. Gives you more space. You know. Stuff like that. Hey, good morning, HT1. How's it going? Scott QC is here. Good to see you guys. Guess says welcome back. Do, do, do. Cool beans. Good to have you. Let's go ahead and slow down and see if we can regain some of these other Main submarines. Four, five, What's our weapon up. count like? Yeah, not good. Not good. I wonder if we can re-engage. Yeah, let's leave combat and re-engage two alphas they probably hauled but yeah we're not catching the alphas in a 688 that ain't happening ain't gonna happen all right so we got five decoys which is great okay this is good all right we have a new center contact bearing 087 does it see our one right periscope depth five knots they probably don't see us again no surface duct what on sonar new contact surface duct. Ship for ultra quiet Let's do a quick look around. Raise the ESM mast. Let's see if there's any radars out there. Nope. Lower the ESM mast. Put the scope up. A couple icebergs. Well, that's a big one. Look at that one. Big one behind us. Down scope. All right, so we got CR one off of our port bow. Scott QC, thank you for the two thousand bits. If I'm doing my math right, two thousand. Appreciate it, man. Which six eighty eight am I driving today? Uh, it says Los Angeles, but that's the class. I don't know. Does it tell you? Not sure how you know the name. I don't know. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh no, it says Los Angeles there too. Huh. I don't know. Whichever one you want it to be, man. Whichever one you want it to be. This is kind of nice of mano a mano. We have one contact. Initial classified biologics. See what sonar comes up with. Hey, Kato Chaos says, glad to catch a live stream. Been watching YouTube lately. Great. Yep. I was going to make a YouTube video this morning, you know, like Naval News or something, but there's really nothing going on. <laughs> uh, China's still doing what China does, what they were doing last week, so there's no update there. Um, you know, I already did. I talked about, oh God, what's it called? The Zumwalt class is getting hypersonic weapons. Two of them are in dry dock. Well, they're in the shipyard now. I don't know if they're in dry dock. Getting hypersonic weapons. So that's not an update. Um, yeah, just nothing really news going on. Ukraine, Russia still going at it. Pretty sad, but that's what it is. So I figured if I'm not going to do a YouTube video, I might as well do a stream. I got to do something. I got to pay for this gym floor. <laughs> uh, no, I honestly, I just didn't want to be bored. And what was I going to do? I was going to sit. I, I can't wait lift today because I am freaking wrecked. Um, I already did my cardio for this morning. I'll probably do cardio again just because at my age, 
you can never do too much cardio. You got to do the cardio. Like if it was up to my doctor, I would just do cardio all day long. He'd be like, wake up, cardio, shower, sleep, cardio, repeat. Sonar, you know. Sierra, one, if it was up to my doctor, that's what I'd be doing right now. <laughs> this guy's getting close. 6,000 yards. All right. We're going to turn away from him. If he's that close. We don't even know what he is. So let's... Let's get deep so we can maneuver. So we'll go 10 degrees down, 10 degree rudder, five knots, because he might be close. Yeah. Uh, let's see, unlocated. I was out training with my volunteer brigade tonight. What? Learned uh, two other mates are fans. Oh, well, that's cool, dude. Yeah, I love it whenever people who enjoy my content meet other people who know my content. They may not necessarily enjoy it, but at least know me. That's kind of cool. I mean, that's... That makes me feel really good that uh, people, you know, word, word of mouth, uh, spread knowledge of the channel, and especially the only subs, the one that's kind of fun, video games and stuff like that. I think that's really good. Makes me feel good. Um, you know, who knows? Who knows where this goes next? Right now, I'm just content to play video games and make YouTube videos for a while. I'm okay with it being a little bit boring for the rest of the year. Yeah, I'm okay Passing with that. 200 feet. Sounds like Russia stranded 20,000 troops. Really? I didn't read that. Are they stranded on the west side of the Dnieper River? Because that's what I would expect. Uh-oh, wrong way. There we go. Doing cardio in bed. Hi <laughs> guys, what you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm too old for that. Can you believe that? Everyone told me that things on your body would stop working in my 40s, and I made it through my 40s. I was like, everything still works, pretty good. And then 50 came along. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. That's what they were talking about. Oh, yeah. That's okay. It's okay. I had my time. When I was 20, 20 to 30, I had my time. Now now I just play golf and video games and talk to you, Chads, you know? I can do cardio while watching streams. Yeah, I want to do, I really do want to do a gym stream just so that I can work out. Because whenever I work out and do weights, I'm down there for like an hour and a half, two hours. Easily. And I'm usually down there just watching YouTube or listening to music. And I'm like, I could be doing a stream talking to you guys, showing you how to do certain, you know, exercises. I mean, I'm no fitness instructor or anything like that, but I know how to lift a weight. You know, it's heavy. You pick it up, you put it over there, and then you take it back over there. And you do that a couple times, you know. I, it would be fun, I think, to do a couple streams like that. So I'm setting up my gym to be exciting and fun to watch, you know. Like, what are people going to do if they watch someone else work out? <laughs> okay, I think I just realized the answer to that. Maybe I won't be doing that. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Ah, never mind. I'm not sharing that with you guys. Used to run three and a half miles a day. That's pretty good. I met a couple that, um, they, they were my age or in my age range, and they were running four miles a day here in the neighborhood. We, um, I live near a golf course that connects to a road, a county road, and they were running from the golf course to the county road and back, and that was like four miles. Yep. And they're my age, too. That's what made me feel bad. I was like, I could be as fit as them Passing if I didn't eat so much feet. junk food. You know, after I got out of the Navy, I basically said, get take me to the China buffet and I'm never leaving. You know, I ate a lot of bad food. I'm paying the price now. Oh, shit. Uh, what's our depth? Let's go ahead and level off here. Sonar still doesn't really have a good idea who this guy is. Oh, yeah. Signature. Oh, my God. I forgot. You can classify these contacts. What the fuck? How did I forget that? Holy smokes. All right. Um, what's the button? What's, what's this button here? Oh my God. I totally forgot about the screen. This is hilarious. I think on the last stream, somebody mentioned, Hey, why don't you classify the contacts? I was like, you can't, you can't classify. Yes, you can. That's right there. Holy smokes. This is what happens when you get old. 
your brain starts uh, failing. All right, so that's it. Where, where, where's the classification button at? How do I designate that? Is it enter? Con sonar, Sierra one. It is enter. Classified okay. as submerged submarine. Yeah, someone tried to tell me about this, and I told him to go away. <laughs> We were looking at this screen the whole time. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. I totally forgot about this. Yep. Pro streamer, folks. Don't judge me. Come left to zero, eight, <laughs> nine, helm high. Oh, man. A little less THC. Um, no, I'm on to, like, Prozac and fentanyl now. It's, it's good stuff. THC, that was just the gateway drug. That's all that was. I'm just kidding. Don't do drugs, kids. It's a comedy channel. It's comedy ha-ha talk. I forgot there might be kids listening. Someone's Googling fentanyl right now. Did you work out a lot as a sonarman? Uh, I, would, I did when I had time. Like, we were required to work out three times a week in the morning, so I did that. And then underway, you were expected to work out on your own. But since there was really nothing else to do underway, I'd work out. Yeah. I, so, you know, I, I got pretty strong in the Navy. I was pretty, uh, I wouldn't say I was fit. I've always been a big person, like barely meeting military weight standards. But I, w I was always a very strong person in the Navy. Just the way I'm built. Alright, Kilo. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, uh... The Kilo looks like he's turning right now, so we're going to wait and see what he does. He's like in this slow... turn to the right, maybe? I don't know. What's his range? 5,500 yards. Yeah, we're... pretty close. We Con, helm, steady course. <laughs> Someone has to act as ballast. Yeah, yeah. Fentanyl is bug spray for humans. Yeah, it's pretty bad stuff, man. Yeah, that's you don't you don't want to be messing around with fentanyl. <laughs> that's true. I just got demonetized <laughs> saying the keywords fentanyl and THC within sixty seconds of each other. The algorithm's going no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The hatches going into submarines are pretty big. I remember there was this one uh, machinist mate, Nuke, on uh, my first boat. He was big. He, he definitely did not meet any kind of weight standards. Come left two, but zero, three, eight, the Navy didn't five. care because we needed nukes. <laughs> so Mate's what can you do? Four, one, zero, and we nine, had this other guy, this torpedo man. Uh -oh. maneuvering, oh, fuck. making turns for... Uh oh. Zero, not. Let's slow back down again. Bring ship for ultra quiet. Uh oh. I think we hath incurred the wrath of the kilo. <laughs> Tell you what. Oh, this is bad. What's he gonna do? We were just turning in on him when he he heard something we did. It might have been my rudder. I just realized I'd put on a thirty degree rudder. Oh no. Yeah. Go. Let's go. Yeah. He's gonna. He's gonna try and get us. He's gonna try and get us. What do we say to the Kilo? Not today. Passing 1,000 feet. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing Damn. zero, four. That could one. be bad for us. Passing 1,000 feet. That could be bad for us. Let's see what happens here. 
Okay, good. It's not bad for us. If our um, torpedo had done a circle there, like it did in our previous mission, we would be evading our own weapon at this point. Make turns for three, three knots. Maneuvering on Con sonar lost contact. Sierra one, last bearing zero two. Con knuckle formed. This one definitely saw us. I don't know why it didn't kill us. Huh. Strange. What's its depth at? I don't know. That one acted kind of weird. Oh, you know what? They probably steered it right at the last second. Yeah, before the wire broke. That's what happened. Hmm. Oh, well... Should have bought better wires. Frosty says, I love this game. You're digging the elevator music? Yeah, yeah. This is some uh, royalty free, copyright safe music, it says. So I was like, all right, we'll just chill with this in the background for a little bit today. So I don't get in trouble playing music. It's funny you call it elevator music. It's supposed to be chill music. Con maneuvering, making turns for three, three knots. And we're just gonna run those weapons. Go this way. Do torpedoes have IFF? In this game, no. We've shot ourselves before. That's happened. <laughs> I like that emote, Brendan. That's pretty funny. Da, da. The loudest thing you heard as a sonarman was the XO calling my name. Where's my door at? I said, maybe you should explore. Find your door. And then he got mad at me and called the cop. It's like, oh shit. Sorry, cop. I'll go get the door. I'll be right back. Elevator music means your head goes empty and you miss your floor. I don't think I've ever missed my floor. Oh, do you know what I did? Oh, Lord. Okay. No, we will not tell that story. No, I did not do that. What I was about to tell you. Now, I, I've never missed my floor in an elevator before, but I've definitely hit the wrong button. And then I hit the wrong button with a new co-worker who I had just met. It was like, he had worked in a different county and he was coming to Orlando to work with me for a weekend because we were doing some extra work over you know Saturday Sunday and so I'm taking him to the floor and my office was on the second floor for some reason I hit like the fourth or third floor whatever button was right next to it and then I was like oh nope gotta hit this floor anyway so the point is we had to go past a floor to get to and the door open and we wait elevator music playing Neither one of us making eye contact or saying anything. And then the door shuts. And then we go onto our floor. Yeah. He was like, it's going to be one of those weekends working with an idiot. Can't, can't operate an elevator. Fucking IT guy. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Story of my life. Yeah. We're gonna go back and get some more torpedoes. Torpedoes. Here we go. Into Holy Lock. Got a, we got a star. Let's rearm and repair everything. Uh, what do we want? Eh, a couple of missiles would be nice. Get like six of those, then the rest will be torpedoes.
Mm -hmm. We'll get these chuckleheads. Catch up to them. Hey, we found them. All right, so we got a new sonar contact bearing 247, designate Sierra 1. We're catching up to them, so we were headed 180. They're off our starboard beam, roughly. Forward beam. We're at 600 feet. There is no surface duct again. Oh. Uh, All right, so we finally caught up to them. Let's take a look at the plots here. Deploy the toad array. And we will see what Sonar comes up with. Hmm. Uh, was it maximum awkwardness in the elevator? It was because I really didn't know the guy. I had just talked to him on the phone. And I'd been working at the company for maybe six months to a year. So I wasn't a new employee, but it was the first time me and him had worked together. And it was really the first time I had worked with anybody else because I was the only person uh, running Orlando in the surrounding area. I was one, I was a team of one. Like whenever I took a day off because I had vacation time or something, there was literally no uh, field tech support for my region. You know, unless they called in someone from Boca Raton, or Fort Lauderdale, you know, way down south, right? Which they usually didn't make the trip to Orlando. You know, if there was something that had to be done by hand, they would be like, it can wait till tomorrow. <laughs> it can wait till Aaron comes back. You know, we did, honestly, most of our repair work is via uh, remote desktop or, you know, remote access. So it doesn't really matter where you're located for 99% of IT issues. But there's always that 1% where you got to go replace a power supply. That was the big thing is uh, Dell sold these office computers for, if you bought them in mass, you know, a good price, right? You know, a $400 desktop computer that had, you know, probably about $400 worth of components in it, if, if you bought them retail, you know. But the power supplies in those were the cheapest things. And after about a year, maybe, maybe less than a year, the power supplies started failing because, and we bought, because we had moved in, this company that I worked for had moved into Orlando and the surrounding area. Oh no, it was the whole state of Florida all at once. God, what's the story behind that? Oh no, they, they, they were in South Florida. So they moved into Central Florida where I was and the surrounding area all at once. I'm talking 27 branches, two corporate back offices. There's a lot of freaking people that I supported. And they also bought all those computers at the same time. I spent months well, just over a month, setting them up with a team of people. That's how I got my job, by the way. They, they, they hired me as a temporary contractor to set up computers in the branches. Literally, put them on the desk, plug them in, connect them to the internet, next. Put them on the desk, plug them in, connect them to the internet, next. That was my job, and I did that uh, on day one. Just And I was only hired for like a weekend. And they were like, you're gonna do the next weekend too. Anyway, so by, by my second weekend, working uh, on these branches just as an independent contractor um there was the team leader because there's a team of like four or five of us to do a branch right so it gets done in one day anyway so the team lead for the second weekend he didn't show up <laughs> we're all sitting there you know we got the boxes it's 9 a.m they unlock the doors the property manager unlocks the doors we're setting things up and i just kind of take over without really thinking about it. Everybody else is, you know, on their phones. They're not really talking. I'm like, let's just get started, right? I basically said that. And so uh, whenever we checked in with the desk up in Cleveland via the telephone, I was like, look, team lead's not here, but we're starting anyway. And that instantly made me the team lead. I didn't ask for it. It didn't pay me anything extra. You know, I just, I just did it on my own without even really thinking about it. Anyway, so the guy does finally show up like around noon, the team lead guy that was late, he was drunk as fuck, but he was functional. Like he could plug in a computer, put it on the desk, connect to the internet and move on to the next one. He, he could do that. So we let him do that, but he was slurring his words. So whenever he got on the phone to Cleveland as the team lead who had been late, they could hear him not even be able to speak English, you know, basically. And so they were like, put Aaron back on the phone. They're like, uh, 
we want you to ask the team lead to leave. You know, I was like, okay. And he left. I hope he didn't drive anywhere, but he fucking left. You know, and that's how I got team lead. So whenever I was doing team lead and they're building all these branches for over like a six week period, you know, in, in central uh, Orlando, they had to do corporate offices, back offices, they're called. And that's like a hundred fucking computers on a floor. It's, it's a, it's a big job. And uh, so the team lead for that, for the back office was an actual bank employee from the IT team up in Pittsburgh. They had flown him down to Florida to be the team lead for the back offices because you cannot jack up the back offices. If you jack up a branch, it can be fixed. You jack up the back office, the, ba the bank doesn't work that day. So yeah, very high risk. Therefore, they got a, a very experienced person in there. And uh, that guy somehow found out about the story of me um, working at the branch on weekend number two, becoming team lead because the guy came in drunk and I just took over naturally. Um, and so that got to him. He worked with me while we set up the corporate office Saturday and Sunday that weekend. And on Saturday, which we were done, we did it all in one day. Uh, he was like, can you come in tomorrow? We're going to set up the servers. And that was my training. I was Cisco certified um, Cisco server manager. That, that, that's, that's my college degree, basically. I was like, yeah, yeah, I can help you with that. So I went in on Sunday by myself. Out of the entire team on the weekend, I was the only guy asked back on Sunday. It was just me and him, this, this guy that flowed down from Pittsburgh, and we set up the server together with the tech team in Pittsburgh over the phone because they had to push files to it and all that stuff. And so I showed that I could work you know, inside the uh, Unix system and stuff like that. And uh, that got me my job at the bank right there. Those two things, one guy coming in drunk and I took over and then I knew a little bit about setting up uh, Windows Server 10, I think it was at the time. Windows Server 8 maybe? It was one of the Windows Server operating systems and Unix, Linux, Unix. I don't think we use Linux. I think it was, oh, it might have been Linux, yeah. Apache, Linux, and then uh, Windows uh, Server 8, 8 or 10. And because I knew my, my way around those operating systems, they're like, well, you're kind of overqualified for the job, but you want a job at the bank? I was like, sure. There you go. That's how I got it. And that's when I started making um, Live League videos and uh, YouTube videos on the weekend. And after work, I would work at the bank, so I made some money to pay the bills. And then I was like, I'm gonna learn how to video edit. I'm gonna learn how to do audio. I'm gonna learn how to live stream. I'm, I'm gonna learn how to record videos and put them on YouTube. Like I learned all that stuff between 2012 and 2017. Those five years when I worked at the bank is when I taught myself how to do what I'm doing now. I think that's the best way to do it. That way you have a steady stream of income that's reliable. The problem is, at least for me, I was exhausted. I'd get home from work and I'd be like, all I want to do is grab a bite to eat because I'm hungry and just watch TV and then go to bed early. <laughs> that's how it felt every day coming home from work for me. This guy's off to the west. We're going to go. We're going to go chase him down here. Come right to. But you got to get through that. You got to, you know, if you want to, if you want to do this full time, you got to put the time in first. You got to be consistent. And you can't be afraid to fail. And instead of getting mad at failing, uh, learn from it. Hell, I still fail today. I've been doing this almost 10 years and uh, still fail. But yeah, all self-taught. You know, watching YouTube videos. YouTube was my best instructor. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to do stuff. And so I just mimic what those people did on the YouTube. And uh, and I didn't do like one and done. Like if I was learning Adobe Premiere Pro for editing video, I would watch a lot of different tutorials. And I would just take the best bits out of each one, you know. So I'd make my Don own style. Helm, steady course. The problem with Adobe products is they often change the interface or they make updates to them without telling you. So one day you open up Adobe Premiere Pro, Pro and it's got a whole different, or the menus are different or something's different about it. Yeah. There was one update that straight up broke the rendering process um, where I could make the video and I would edit it and it would be like a 10 minute video and I'd hit render and it would take like an hour to render. 
that it should have rendered in like half the time. If it's a 10 minute video, it should render in five minutes. It should be half the time at 1080p, 60 frames per second um, with the hardware that I have. It just, just didn't do it. Anyway, so that's that's kind of what happened there. CCNA, CCNP. Uh, I was CCNA, and then uh, hmm. I don't think I was P. No, it's been it's been a long time. Two thousand eight. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it was Windows Server two thousand eight was what I went to school on because by two thousand twelve I was already I already had a job. Yeah. But I mean, the whole point of me telling you that story is that, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to pursue a hobby like I did, um, don't don't quit your job, you know, keep your day job and get better at your hobby. Yeah. Oh, it's a robocall. People want me to vote for whatever. There must be an election this year or something. You're quite a fan of what? Fermentation syndrome? What the hell's that? Your job is a hobby? Yeah. I mean, you could say that. I, I kind of fall into that. I really enjoyed working on computers and fixing them and troubleshooting problems until I did it professionally. <laughs> uh, that really destroyed my love for uh, computer hardware. Yeah. I stressed myself out in that job, though. There's Looking back at it, there was like a lot of times whenever I should have just kept on going, you know, like I, I didn't need to stress as much as I did. Too much beer in your stomach. Oh, yeah, I'm not a beer drinker. I like the vodka. You get in, you get out. You, know, you drink the vodka, you get all woozy, and then you go to bed. You got time for beer. Beer takes too long. <laughs> Gut fermentation syndrome is when carbs ferment in your gut and you get drunk. Oh my God. I've never even heard of that. Have I ever done software development? I did software development in you know, college because I was part of the curriculum and I hated it. I was not good at it. But yeah, technically I did. That's why I don't mod video games. Screw that. Oh, where is this dude at? I'm gonna have to use some active sonar here. Con sonar, switching to active search. That's kinda loud. Let's go over here so it's not so loud. <laughs> you did windows for work groups you mad lad yes I remember that I was in the Navy when that came out yep windows for work groups uh, bulk office computers are cheap uh, everywhere they're just meant to last through the warranty period yeah we got very lucky that the uh, the, the power supplies failed while they were still under warranty so they shipped us power supplies and I, and that's why I had to go to, to locations as often Tom as I did Switching is you can't search. replace a power supply by remoting into the computer and fixing it. You need to go to the wherever the computer is with a new power supply and put it in there and replacing a power supply in a computer is easy like 10 minutes, 15 minutes if you're slow, you know, 20 minutes if you want to talk to the teller because she's got big boobs. Yeah. I had this, oh God, I don't know how to tell that story. Yeah, there was this one girl that I think she, I'm, I'm pretty sure she was doing this on purpose. So the computers right to, to, uh, uh, in the zero, corporate no office, I. they weren't always on top of the desk like they were supposed to be. People like their desk, desk space so they can put all the bank paperwork on it. And some people would put their computers on their own without telling me or doing anything on the floor. And this lady was like that. And so she would always, once a week, come up with a ticket where 
Uh, I would call her. I would, I would be like, hey, what's going on? Your email's not working. Let me remote in and fix it. And she'd be like, oh, can you come over here and take a look at it? There's a few other things that aren't working right. And my computer's kind of slow. And Okay, all right, fine. And she was in the back office in Orlando where I was. So it wasn't that much to go over to her office. But she would always want me to work on her computer with her sitting at her desk. And I was like, you need to go to the break room or get up. Because uh, I don't like working under your desk with you sitting there. But she was, I don't know, trying to set me up for like HR or something like that. That's, that's, that's what I felt. Like, I was like, why do you want me to work under your desk, on your computer that's not supposed to be on the floor while you're sitting there? I wouldn't do it. So be careful of that too in the corporate world. People will try to set you up so they can uh, get a promotion or get some kind of settlement with HR so, so they don't have to work there anymore. Be very careful. I'm not saying that's what she was doing, but it sure as hell seemed like it because it was unnecessary for her to have so many problems that she had and then to do something like that. Yeah. So just, just be aware. People will try and set that shit up for you. That's a family guy episode. Is it really? <laughs> okay. Well, it happens in reality too. Pretty awful Delphi. I mean, good luck being a guy going to HR saying you're being sexually harassed. Yeah, that's not, well, maybe it'll fly today, but back in 2010, it wouldn't, that, that ain't gonna fly. Was it an IT guy episode too? Jesus Christ, okay. Well, I think somebody who writes those shows might have actually been an IT person. Yeah. Now, I didn't mind talking to the people and uh, hanging out with the tellers while I was working, but working under your desk is a bit too far. That's... that's because that's like obvious. Plus, how does it look to other employees as they're walking by your office and they got my freaking big ass feet sticking out under your desk, you know? Where'd this submarine go? Sonar has lied to us. They said it was to the west. Let's slow down and do an active search again. Make turns four, five knots, maneuvering eye. IT crowd desk rabbit. You know what? I'm going to write that down. This will be funny if something that I happened to me in real life is like in a comedy skit. That's hilarious. Desk maneuvering. rabbit. Five knots. Oh, yeah. It says vessels nearby. Okay. Sonar. Let's do Switching another baffle clear. Search. Let's go uh, back to the south. Come left to one eight zero helm I. Yeah, it says there's somebody close to us. Sonar can't find them. Are they right above us? Huh. Maybe they're so close to us that we, that's why we can't see them. Stretch me, my arms are sore. Yeah, I didn't do any cable work, um, Alonzo. We we hired that out to contractors, thank God, because cable work is actually difficult. That's labor intensive, hot, sweaty. You're up above the air conditioning ducts a lot of times. Um, you know, and this is in Central Florida, Orlando. And we had a branch that had a two floor ceiling. So whenever you walked in, it was a huge open atrium. So first floor, second floor, all open airspace. That meant the lights were on the floor level of the third floor. Okay. And whenever those lights had to be replaced or cables had to be run, um, you know, webcams be mounted. We outsourced all that shit. I was like, I'm not climbing on a freaking 28 foot ladder you know, which is this rickety freaking aluminum metal thing to go change that freaking Wi-Fi hotspot that's up there. You're going to go, you know, we're going to pay someone to do that. Yeah, I would not do that. Lotus Smart Suite. I remember that I sold Lotus Smart Suite in 1993 when I worked at, um, while I was in the Navy, I took on a part-time job because I'm a moron. You know, I didn't get hardly paid any money in the Navy. So I worked at Software Etc. And we sold Lotus Suite Con, 1, 2, Cal, 3. Or Lotus 1, 2, 3 was one of the products in Lotus Suite. 
And we were told to push it. They were like, stop selling so much Microsoft product, push the Lotus product. So I guess Lotus had some kind of deal with software, etc., to push their products on the sales floor. Like my mouse. This is called a Rocat. It's one of those high performance mouses. And I use it to play um, submarine video games. High performance. High performance. Look at that. Come on, Sonar. Where is this contact at? Let's try changing depth. Make turns for two. Zero. Let's get up Nine. shallow here. Maneuvering eye. Make turns for one, five knots. Maneuvering eye. Passing 400 feet. We're going up. Passing 300. Make turns for one, zero knots. Maneuvering eye. Make turns for five knots. Maneuvering eye. <clears throat> Just stick with the VDC side of electrical work. What is that VDC? I've heard that before, but I don't remember what it means. Your mouse is 20 years old and it still works. Just a flop. Do you have one of those mice that have the little ball in it that you got to clean once in a while? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's old school there. He uses the serial port. Most computers don't even come with a serial port anymore. Uh oh, what are you doing? What's going on here? Let's raise that ESM mast. Raise the ESM mast. ESM mast. No contact. Lower the ESM mast. Huh. Let's do. Um, raise the radar mast. Let's do radar just to be sure. It says there's no contacts up here. And we're zoomed all the way out, so yeah. Lower the radar mast. No contacts. Ba -ba -ba -da. All right, let's make our depth. Let's go down to like 200 feet. Make depth. Get away from all the zero, surface zero noise. Feet, dive by. So there. Oh, the vessel. Somehow we missed it. Hmm. That's too bad. It was an Oscar. That was our primary mission too. Was to sink that guy. Oh. Oh well. What can you do? Let's see if we can find these guys. There's one right there. Let's go grab him. All right, so I slowed down so we wouldn't be detected here. And we do have a strong surface duct. Awesome. But a weak thermal layer. Strong duct, weak layer. I wonder how that works. Oh, yeah, I know how. Okay, yeah. Uh, bearing 065. We're heading course north, so it's kind of off our starboard side again. Con, sonar, new contact. Rig ship for ultra quiet. There he is. Hey, at least we have a contact this time. That's great. Virtual design, okay, that's not what I was thinking zero, about. Three, six, VDC, zero, uh, two. I guess it can mean a couple of different things. Con, sonar, new contact oh, wow, zero, quite five, a few contacts. Six, designated Sierra, three. Difference between the Con, wiring sonar, guy and the designer. Bearing, one, okay. one, two, designated Sierra, four. do here what's next hold on one second we got to select the next album let's do uh la sunset look at that boom la sunset what is it that makes the layer weak and strong dunk vice versa um that is a fantastic question so what you're going to want to do is go to google 
and uh, search RP-33. RP-33 is a book that has been declassified that has that answer. I will point you in that direction, sir. Go read RP-33. I will tell you exactly how that works. So this uh, YouTube channel that has this royalty-free music is called White Bat Audio. And uh, it's not bad, you know. At least it's music we can listen to without getting in trouble, right? That's the important part. Abraham Lincoln once said, don't trust anything you read on the internet. <laughs> Who said that? Pee pistol, get out of here. Pea Pistol's our resident troll, but we, 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 we love them. We uh, rent them out for parties once in a while. Good times. Did you know the pools on the Titanic are still full? Did the Titanic have pools? I imagine it was a luxury ship, so yeah, probably did. Uh, let's see, Elric says, same as in the air, different water temps against each other creates zones. That's true. Whenever you look up at the sky and you see the clouds and they're kind of playing out on what's called the ceiling, that's like a thermal barrier. But my point is the clouds in the air act a lot like uh, waves in the ocean. Yeah. So whenever I look up at the sky, it feels like I'm underwater because I recognize what's going on. I recognize the sights behind it. What the fuck? Leave me alone. Okay, I'll vote for your dude. Stop it. Yeah. I guess my phone's going to be ringing five times a day Come right to for the rest zero of... Uh, nine zero Helm high. If they want money, they'll send me an email because... On the email, they'll have a link to send money. But if it's a phone call, it's uh, let me tell you about so and so and how what her plan is to save America. Shut up! Stop bugging me about your plan to save America. Da, da, da. Oh, there you go. That's a great. Yeah, if you want to. Our lost contact, <laughs> Sierra Two. Last okay. Bearing. Zero, Let's be very three, careful here. Eight, if you want to have those questions answered by randos, go to the Steam community comment section, okay? But if you want to read the answer yourself from a United States Navy training manual, go to RP-33, okay? RP-33 isn't some Constar knucklehead with a keyboard zero, and an internet one, connection. RP-33 is zero, goddamn one, oceanographic contact scientist uh, writing that book. Or you could just go to Steam comments and try try your luck there. Oh, man, Sierra 3. Let's see what we got here. Hey, if you're looking at the RP-33, can you tell us, is it written on the cover page what RP stands for? Because I honestly don't remember. The RP Gone. means something. No. Steady course. You, go, you prefer to go to 4chan? <laughs> yeah, go to 4chan and what's that video game? War Thunder. Yeah, War Thunder forums. That's where you get all your hot tips on military technology. Yeah. Oh my god. Reference publication, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. This is what getting old does. Forget stuff. Simple stuff. <laughs> I 
RP33 is a, a woody dam? That's hilarious. More blunder, yeah. Uh, let's see, you do play some War Thunder every now and again? Yeah, I was just making the War Thunder reference because some knucklehead gave some sort of tank design documents to the developers and that stuff was sensitive or something? I don't know. I don't know the whole story. I just... <sighs> don't do that. I understand we're passionate about video games and all this stuff, but come on, guys. Don't do that. All right, let's see what CR3 is. It's not a whale. Yeah, if you Googled RP33 and you're reading it, you're on the same list I'm on, my friend. So, sorry about that. I just like to have company. We'll all be in general pop soon. <laughs> be a victor. Con sonar. Oh, he's coming right for us. God, sonar. Come right to. Why One, you suck four, so bad? Nine, What's his range? No, 15,000 yards. Let's get off his track. Con sonar. We are cavitating. <gasps> What's our depth? Con sonar. No longer cavitating. Ooh, I, I thought we were at 600 feet. We were not. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra. Con maneuvering. Making turn <sighs> four, five knots. I forgot we were at periscope depth. Passing 100 feet. That was bad. It's a good captain that knows what depth he's at. We're trying to get out of the way of this Victor because he's coming through like a dump truck. So we're going to get off, kind of try and get out of his way. Jingles 2.0. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I love that man. Jingles is one of the best people like on the internet. He's awesome. It's a shame that you know there's a freaking ocean between us because he's a guy that I'd definitely, you know, invite to dinner. Passing 600 feet. Just have a chat, you know. He's on that list of people I'd like to have dinner with. Passing Archimedes. The mighty Jingles. The Wiggles. Passing 800 feet. You know, true artists. We're going to have to go faster. How fast is this guy going? He's going 10 One, knots. Five, 10 knots, 12,000 yards. He can't hear a thing. Con maneuvering. Making turns for One, five, knots. Yeah, um, I, I, I saw the latest, or was it a week ago now, the Mingles with Jingles, where he talked about Rita move it into his spare room and um, they mentioned that since he had bought the house that he's living in now or apartment whatever it is um, you know he didn't like living alone because he was living with his friend um, I guess in the upstairs bedroom or something um, what's his friend's name the guy I, for I forget his friend's name anyway and and I kind of get that like I'm living alone right now and it, it, it is uh oh Oh, he's 7,000 yards away. Thanks a lot, Sonar. Shoot. Uh, sonar got the range way, way wrong. Oh, my gosh. Well, that screwed us. Con sonar, launch transient from Sierra yep. 3. Con sonar, launch transient from Sierra 3. Oh, that probably screwed us. Let's go this way. turns for. Let's cut the Three wire. Maneuvering eye. Yep. Gone. Con sonar lost contact. That's not Zero good. Three 
Last bearing, zero, two, nine. Passing 900 feet. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra 3, bearing zero, two, eight. Passing 1,000 yeah, feet. We're basically going to um, trade shots here and try again, right? Passing 1,000 feet. That's kind of the plan. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing. That zero, noisemaker three, might attract zero. our weapon. That might have been a mess up on his part. Oh, he's turning back into me. Oh, you fool. Uh, that was a mistake. Yeah, we might get a hit right here. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing zero, three, nine. Yeah, good noisemaker right at the very end there. Good job. Con maneuvering, making turns for three, three, ba -ba -ba. nine. Teapot, you served during Desert Storm? Yeah, I was in the Navy during Desert Storm, but I wasn't in theater for that one. I remember, uh, when did that happen? Whenever, what's his name? Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. I was the driver for the Admiral of the Submarine School because I was waiting my next class. So my temporary duty was to sit at this guy's desk outside his office. And every time he wanted to go somewhere for he had a meeting, um, I'd go down, start the car, oh, so pull it around front. Maker, Pretty Zero, easy duty, five, to be honest with you. It wasn't seven. bad. But, um... Make turns for we're going to slow one, down and shoot him again. Zero knots, maneuvering eye. Excuse me. I remember asking him, I was like, uh, what's going to go on with Kuwait, sir? What do you think, sir? And that was a real violation Call of protocol, because as the driver, I was ready. never supposed to address the Admiral. But this is in an era before cell phones and mobile communication, so the Admiral was sitting in the back seat of my car for... 20 minutes while we drove with no conversation which might have been good for him maybe he just enjoyed that maybe he was like i just want to chill but um i took a chance i rolled the dice and opened my mouth and i was like what do you think about kuwait what's gonna go on there and he unloaded on me he was like oh it's gonna get hot we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be do we're gonna field test these tomahawk missiles we got he was telling me the whole thing i was like oh shit okay and he was right too. About seven or eight months after that chat, we were starting the ground war, which lasted like five days or something. The ground war was quick. And that really, I think, screwed us up. Whenever we won the ground war in 1991 uh, in the Gulf, you know, in, in Kuwait and Southern Iraq, we thought we could do that everywhere. The United States did. And uh, so we started doing it everywhere. So in a way that kind of worked against us. Our, our own victory made us hubris. Hubric? I don't know. But that was like a field test of our technology against old Soviet tank and uh, weapon technology. And we dominated the battle space. And one of the other fallouts that doesn't ever get recognized or talked about from the first Gulf War in 1990-91 is that is when China saw that and they looked at their own inventory of all the Soviet tanks that they had been buying from Russia and the Soviet Union back then and they realized they were useless against the Americans. And they were like, well, we need to rethink the Chinese military. And they did. And 1990 91 was the beginning of the Chinese industrial buildup that led to the military buildup that we see today. It's been going on for 30 years. Yep. That was the beginning. That was the catalyst. That was the moment in history that kind of woke everybody up to the dominance of NATO tactics, communications, 
and then of course equipment you know training too that really shocked a lot of people and pleasantly surprising surprised us as well that our stuff worked as advertised Make turns four, five, nine. especially and I might be biased here because I lived and worked in the submarine community but the Tomahawk missile strikes in Kuwait and southern Iraq and downtown Baghdad Constant that was what really got everybody's attention one, they were like this zero, is a new five, kind two. of warfare that you can precision Time bomb something with what is essentially a five, drone nine. being the cruise missile you know, hundreds of miles away. Yeah. That changed. That changed warfare. So what Russia did is, of course, they, you know, just designed new systems. But even though the systems didn't work very well, as we're seeing now in Ukraine, they, uh, would cherry pick test and make them public and talk about how great their weapon systems are. And one of the most recent examples of this, of a weapon system that we thought was highly advanced and capable and turns out is not, is the S-400 uh, surface to air missile system. It is an S-300 missile system with a little bit more range and a different, not necessarily better, electronic warfare suite. Other than that, it's not any better than S-300. And the S-400 was supposed to be the bee's knees, shooting down, you know, the F-35 fighter, things like that. And turns out, it can't even shoot down a drone, you know? Which was one of the things that it was special about it, um, is that it could track drones. And I don't know if you'd waste an S-400 missile on a drone, but with the S-400 electronic warfare system, you could track the swarm of drones and target them and then you'd use something else like a tour to shoot them down i guess but Con sonar. that doesn't even work is classified as submerged like they're submarine. flying ukraine is flying drones uh near air defenses and they're not even being detected left two, three, one, now, a lot of those are s300s nine. but still over in ukraine yeah russia doesn't want their s400s uh to be field tested in Ukraine because they know they know they don't work right once we get steady on course here we're going to shoot again at this November but I haven't really been following the Ukraine war recently I don't know what updates have happened I, I know something about a bridge got bombed and that's about it mm. oh yeah Pentagon Wars that's a hilarious movie yeah I watched part of a movie called Vice yesterday, and it's really hard to get into. You really got to power through the first 20 minutes of that movie. But once you get past the first 20 minutes, it, it, it's a bio documentary, if you will, bio movie about Dick Cheney's life, right? Vice President Dick Cheney. Um, and it's very biased. Steady course. So, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. Ah, oh, crap. This November's coming the same way. What the hell? All right, let's get off his track. Come left to one, We're getting a little seven, bit unlucky nine. with the Make turns. direction Make of motion turns here. One, five, anyway, nine. my point is Maneuver is that nine. it's done very, it's shot. It's filmed very well. And I love movies where nine. I can Maneuver. ignore the plot and the Maneuver. actors and the dialogue one, and just five, appreciate nine. every scene. Batman is one of those movies. The most recent Batman and the guy that did Batman, this is how I got on device. The director and cinematographer that did Batman did Vice, the, the Dick Cheney movie. And so it's not nearly as artistic as Batman is, but you can tell it's the same style. Very gritty, dark, out of focus edges on the screen. Yeah, uh, I love movies like that. They just look so damn good. Like I could watch the new Batman with the sound off and I would love it. Just because it looks good. Con, helm, steady course. Uh, Come left to let's bring one, the November one, out of the baffles. Helm, the I November's am. driving into our port baffles here, so we're going to try and pull them out. Anyway, so like I said, I didn't finish the movie, so I don't know if I could recommend it. Uh, but it's pretty interesting to see 
how Dick Cheney went from being basically a Congress, a congressional intern because he flunked out of Yale and uh, was looking for something to do, I guess. And uh, ended up being the vice president of the United States. You know, he, he failed his way to uh, a position of great power. And then the movie takes a lot of liberties, but the movie strongly suggests that even in one scene states he was acting as the president. He was doing presidential uh, decrees, uh, unless otherwise directed, you know, decrees uh, for the military and all sorts of things. Yeah. So he was like the president incognito, overstepping his authority, I guess. Now, I don't know if any of that really happened, but it's in the movie. Yeah. Like I said, you got to take the movie with a grain of salt. Who knows if it's real or not? All right. All right, we're back down to five knots. We're going to shoot in the direction of this November. Shoot two, one. Aye, sir. Hey, Barb. Thanks for the seven-month resub. You guys think it's a good movie? Yeah, I, I didn't finish it, but... And I'll say this. The first 20 minutes, I had to take a break in the first 20 minutes of the movie because it was so dull and dry and I don't care. And then I was like, let's just power through this and see if it gets good. And it eventually does. Once they get to the part where he's a congressional intern and he meets Donald Rumsfeld, which is played by Steve Carroll, um, which is hilarious because, you know, Steve Carroll's a comedian and I love it whenever he plays roles that are not comedic. You know, once you get Steve Carroll and uh, the guy that played Vice, uh, what's his name? He's a real famous actor. He's a method actor. Who played Lincoln in the movie Abraham Lincoln? Who played uh, The Dark Knight Rises Batman? Who was that guy? He's a method actor. Um, Kristen Bale. Yep, Kristen Bale. Thank you. Kristen Bale plays... Um, Dick Cheney and I didn't even recognize him because he had put on a bunch of weight and it might have been some makeup and prosthetics as well but he was definitely a much bigger dude than he was in his Batman days and it wasn't muscle <laughs> now he might have been wearing a fat suit you never know but uh, my point is uh, he's such a good actor that even looking at him I couldn't tell right away that it was Christian Bale I had to go to the computer and Google Google the cast so as far as the like the writer, the uh, director, and the actors, that's a great movie. Absolutely. All right, something's not right here. Let's move this torpedo kind of more towards the November. Con sonar launch transient from Sierra Two. Oh, we got, okay, so CR2 is hostile. Let's just snapshot on him. Two, three. Aye, sir. Let's put a weapon up in that area. We got a, we got an incoming Maybe weapon, so we want to speed up a little one, bit. Zero, not maneuvering being careful not to break any wires. Con maneuvering. I'm going to turn the active on this one, torpedo, zero, just so. Not. I need a better range for no, CR1. Is he really coming down towards us? To so Sierra one maneuvered after we shot, but I I don't know. Even though we know what course he's on, he's turning. We don't know what range he's at. Sonar thinks he's back. He's back up that way. Okay. Yeah, I should have just kept the torpedo going the way that it was. We can turn this back off again too. November's are cursed submarines, yeah. Did did we do a November subbrief? I don't know, remember. I think we did. I think we did do the November. That might be one of the very old ones. Oh, are you kidding me? Look where he shot that torpedo. That was a really good shot. Con sonar. Sierra Crap. 2 is cavitating. Yeah. Let's um we're gonna have to cut these wires. Or we could do this. We could shoot the um the decoy. Let me do this. Let's go. Let's try a 10 degree rudder and see if I can get off the course of this Con incoming fire. Noise maker bearing 
Zero, four, five. I'm trying not to lose these wires. All right, he's way up there. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Uh, did Christian Bale have Heath Ledger? What? Why would you say that, P-Pistol? Holy cow. Jesus Christ, guys. Yeah, this is 1984, Cali. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra two last bearing. Yeah, I don't zero, know where zero, where Sierra two is gonna end up. Is in the baffle. Noisemaker bearing zero four three. Hey, that November turning is a really good Con, fire control sign for us. Homing. Yeah. If we get this hit, we'll just um, Con, fire control weapon acquired. We'll just speed up. We'll cut the wire on tube three. Let's see if we get a hit here. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra one last bearing zero Turn our baffles. Four, zero contact is in the baffles. Con sonar noisemaker bearing. Right, November's zero. dead. Let's get out of here. Make turn Cut four, tube three. Three, three knots. Maneuvering on. We're gonna go Come this right way. Two, two, seven, one. Helm I. Let's see if we can get that out of the way of um. These incoming shots. Fairy, do you like the music? Yeah, me too. This is uh, White Bat Audio. Copyright free music. And it's actually pretty good. For, Con, better no, than the other copyright free music course. that's out there, I think. Con fire control. We've lost the wire. We're basically just running from these incoming weapons right now. Uh, yeah, beef. This is the stock game. No mods. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra. Not two, installing any bearing, mods. Zero, zero, three. Contact faded. The mods have come a long way with this game, though. They have uh, surface combat now, where you can drive the ships around. That's pretty cool. You know, things like that. You can play the Burke in the dot mod too. That's pretty cool. The one tor this torpedo here is pretty close. Uh, that one, this one back here is not going to see us, but this one might. Con maneuvering, making We're kind of right on that edge. It's the uh, range here, three thousand yards. Uh, yeah, you probably won't see us. Probably won't. How's our torpedo Con doing? Noisemaker bearing zero, zero, oh, we seven. got a bearing on it now. Once these torpedoes go past us, we'll uh, slow down and we'll reassess this situation. You know, we might have to send another torpedo up north. Who knows? Oh, those torpedoes ran out of fuel. Con sonar, noise maker. Let's slow down to five knots Speech and just see what's going on. Five knots, maneuvering eye. He's really panicking up here. He's cavitating and dropping a lot of noise makers. Would I say the Russian Navy has higher quality equipment and people than their ground forces? Oh, I don't know. Um, that's a really good question. So, I can't really talk about my experiences with the Russians anymore. 
but generally speaking, I would say that I personally, me, over estimated their capability. The Russians naval capability. Zero, five, and I mean everything. Zero. Training, equipment, operations. Sonar, bearing, the whole zero, spectrum. One, zero. I Call thought the Russians were better two, one, than they actually are. At, whether it's the, which one's worse, the army or the navy, I don't know. That's mostly because I don't know much about the army. But I know the navy is not performing to the level that I expected. If they can't shoot down a subsonic cruise missile, there's something very wrong uh, with the navy. That little torpedo's still going. Look at that, he hunted his ass down. There was three countermeasures in a triangle, and it went between all three of them and was like, bam! Oh, that was a good weapon. Good job. Yeah, so I'm a little disappointed in their performance, but because of what they're doing, I'm also glad that I was wrong. So, there's some things that it's okay to be wrong about. And that overestimating your enemy is uh, one. One of them. The November, November Victor. That was a pretty good mission, man. Completely annihilated them. Uh, where are we at? Oh, we're up here. Uh, here's a submarine. Let's come up and get this guy. Hey, buddy. Where are you at? Oh, crap. He went right by us. Oh, shit. Let's get this guy. He's not moving. So, he should be easy to find. Alright, we're doing 10 knots, 150 feet. 310, no surface duct. What's our course? We're heading north. So he's just off our port bow a little bit. Okay. Con sonar, new contact. Bring ship for ultra quiet. Oh crap. We didn't load the torpedo tube. I thought that one was already loaded. Con sonar, new contact. Oh, so, Bearing got a couple contacts two, off our port one, side. Seven, designated Let's sonar do their two. job. Zerwokes, thanks for the six month resub. Appreciate that. How scary is the Spearfish? Uh, the Spearfish might be one of the most impressive torpedoes I've ever seen. Yeah. I'll just have to leave it at that. Yeah. It's pretty scary. I don't want to give it a rating because I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not going to give it a rating. Yeah. I'm just going to say wow. Yeah. I'm a little jealous that the damn Royal Navy came up with that. How dare they make a better weapon than the Americans. They're, they're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good though. Uh, who else did I miss? Did I miss? I think I missed a sub, so sorry if I did. You guys lurking out there. I appreciate it. For those of you just joining us, um, I'm putting, uh, I'm expanding my gym, and uh, I was, <laughs> I got a call from the guy that's uh, s selling me the gym equipment right at the beginning of the stream, so we were talking about that. So every, every donation, every subscription that we get from today's stream and probably the next couple streams, it's going to be going for uh, paying the gym floor. We're putting this rubberized padding on the gym floor so it protects both the floor and the equipment. Because because my um, my basement where I keep the quote unquote gym out, it's just a basement, uh, a concrete floor. Sorry, concrete floor in the basement. Which is what you want for a basement in case it floods. You don't want like a rug or something down there that absorbs water, right? So... We are putting, um, it's just like this half inch thin padding across the floor down there. And then we'll put some additional, I'm going to get like a leg press machine. Uh, I want to get the leg extension machine, but they want too much money for it. So I'm going to see if we can figure something out there. I don't know why, to, if, if you get a free weight machine, like the leg press is basically just a free weight machine. That is like half the price, if not less than half the price of a machine weight machine if that makes sense i'm saying the word machine a lot but there's two different types of machines you have free weight machines mechanical machines and then you have these not free weight machines uh they're just weights in a stack stack and pulley system if it's a stack and pulley system it's like at least twice the price it's ridiculous and so the leg extension machine is a stack pulley weight system and uh i like the machine i just don't like the cost <laughs> so so we're not getting that one uh yet you know we'll see if i can figure out a cheaper alternative and we're also getting like an inversion machine 
uh, an inversion machine uh, table, whatever you want. Yeah, I'll call it an inversion table. Is this machine that you you sit in? You kind of lean in it, and you lock your legs, feet down in it, and you tip yourself upside down, uh, but not 90 degrees. You know, just at an angle, upside down, like 60 degrees, and it helps straighten your spine out. It also pulls all your body weight that's up here off of your lower back while you're inverted. Yeah, it's very good for your back. Very good. So we're getting one of those. This guy's very close and he's very behind us. Let's hit the button here and see what he is. Let's go with submarine. See if we get him lined up. Oh, oh, oh. Passing 200 feet. Oh no, it's an alpha. Con sonar, Sierra 2 is classified right. as submerged submarine. Well, if he's 14,000 yards away, we're going to be Make fine. Turns for one, zero, nine. Since we're no longer silent on. running, we'll go ahead and reload that tube. Con maneuvering, making turns for one, zero, nine. So here's the problem with the alphas. We can't let him get too far away. Because they'll straight up outrun our weapon. Hmm. Crap. Passing 400 feet. Let's get down on depth, and then we'll talk about where we're going to turn. He's in our baffles right now, but I don't want to turn towards Sierra 1. Passing 500 feet. So I'm in a conundrum here. We have a contact in our baffles. We need to maneuver, get it out of the baffles. That's that's the position we're in. If we come to the right, we'll be driving ahead of our target. You don't want to do that. If I come to the left, I'll be turning towards an unknown target that we haven't classified and we don't have the range for. So we run the risk of colliding with that one. Passing 700 feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come to the left because that is the right answer. Well, only a little bit, Come left so we don't collide three, with Sierra one, 1. Two. Helm, I. So, let's take a look at Sierra 1. I remember the button. Con sonar, Sierra it's a Juliet. Oh, so this is an escort uh, high-value mission. So this is our primary target. Let's slow down. Bring ship for ultra quiet. This Juliet is deaf. Not very good sonar system on Juliet. Come right to we're going to let her go two, by us, three, and we're going to sink it. The Alpha is not Con the target. Sonar regained contact on Sierra two, bearing two, zero, two. This Alpha might be very far away, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're actually in a really good position now that I have the tactical picture. This is really good. Oh, let's see. We have Hol Helm says, if I said your name right, Says back when serving, if you felt the world was going crazy, did you have the option to call and say, Con, "Put me on the next course. subs going out"? What? No, no, no. Um, the way the military works is you get orders, and this is for enlisted, right? And this is for submarines, so it may be different for surface ships. But for us, we had a three-four rotation, which meant four years at sea on a submarine, followed by three years ashore either at a support facility or a training facility. Or you could maybe get special duty as like a recruiter or something like that. You could uh, That was always an option. But you usually had one of those three things. And you didn't have a lot of uh, choice as to when you transferred. The, the one thing that the Navy did very well when I was in uh, is they gave us a choice. Uh, there was one person, he's stationed out of Tennessee, that did all the submarine sonar men in the Navy. All 400 of us, or however many there are, um, at, at, at any one time, he he would give us the orders. So whenever we got into our window where we're about to transfer a few months beforehand, we'd give him a call, and then later on with the internet, it would just be an internet thing, uh, and he would send us a choice of like five to nine submarines, you know, and it varied. And what those were were submarines that had billets available for a submarine sonarman, you know. They're like, which one of these nine submarines do you want to go to? And sometimes it was less than nine. And so what, what I would do is I would be like, well, you know, where are the submarines based out of? If they're based out of Groton, Norfolk, Hawaii, you know, Guam, 
you know, where, where, where do I want to live? That would be my first choice. And then of the five to nine that I'm looking at, let's say there was only two where I wanted to go out of Groton, let's say. So out of those two submarines, what squadron are they? Are they part of the development squadron that's going to get all the cool equipment and good missions? Because if that's the case, I'm taking that one. That's how I did my entire career, by the way. I wanted to be on submarines that were going to do special operations. And those submarines typically are assigned to special divisions. For instance, all three Seawolf submarines are stationed out of a um, development squadron on the West Coast. So I would look for development squadrons to, to pick my uh, submarine. And then that would usually leave only one sub. If, and sometimes that wasn't even a choice. Like at the end of my career, I had to pick a submarine that didn't do special missions. Yeah. So then I looked at who was on the sub. Did I know the chief? Did I know the cob? You know, who was I relieving basically, right? I wasn't relieving the cob, but did I know people on the submarine? You know, and if I did, I'd pick that one just because I knew them, just because I, at least I knew a couple people already, you know, the small world submarine sonarman. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna sink this knucklehead. Let's come left to course two seven zero. Left to two seven zero. Helm I. Can do a turn here. Make turns for one zero knots. Maneuvering I. Con Gonna maneuvering. sink him. Making turns for one zero knots. So while I wouldn't get the choice choice or the opportunity to wave my hand and be like, stick me on a sub now. When my time did come for rotation, I did have a small amount of flexibility and choice as to what command I went to. But the Navy always reserved the right to put you wherever the hell they wanted you, you know? That's the reality of it. But in my case, that never happened. Uh, I was on four different submarines, um, not counting the, well, I guess five, but one doesn't really count because I was never, I was temporary. One was temporary duty, so I'm not, I don't really count that one. Um, but of the four that I was permanently stationed on, I chose all four of them. Even the first one. I don't know if other services work that way, but that's how the submarine service worked when I was in. There's the Julia right there if y'all are looking for it. It's right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Ba -ba -ba -da. What we're doing? You see, this maneuver we just made is we're <coughs> getting away from the Alpha and going to get behind the Juliet, and then we're going to shoot him with a Mark Forty Eight in the rear. What music am I listening to? This is White Bat Audio, royalty-free, copyright-safe music, YouTube channel. <clears throat> it's pretty chill. <coughs> Pardon me, I got something in my throat. <clears> throat> Probably dog hair. Yeah, if you're an officer, you want to go at least spend some time in Washington, D.C., because that's very helpful for your career. Once you get above the 03 level, so 04, 04 is where who you know really matters in your promotion as much as performance matters. <clears throat> and ironically, the higher you go up that chain, your performance matters less and who you know matters more. Yeah. They are kind of cracking down on that now because of the collisions that happened in the Pacific. Uh, in 2017, we uh, had two collisions in one year and uh, lost some sailors. Uh, some sailors uh, were in the bunk during one collision. And the way the collision happened, it pushed the hull into the birthing space, pinning some sailors in their rack as it flooded. Huh. Nightmare way to die. My no, absolute nightmare. Um, but they couldn't get out in time to save a couple sailors. And that changed a lot of things in the Pacific Fleet. 
probably navy wide, but Come certainly left, the Pacific two, Fleet. Three, seven, helm, aye. So we're just turning again to get in behind the Juliet. We really want to watch our range here. In fact, we're going to slow down. I just realized we're inside 5,000 yards. Anytime you get to within 5,000 yards of any submarine, even if it's like a um, a really old one like this Juliet is, there's a chance they're going to hear you if you're doing more than five knots. Rig ship for ultra quiet. So we're going to rig for ultra quiet. Let them get back outside 5,000 yards, and then we'll get back in on them. But this is a good course to be on. Steady course. <clears throat> you started playing this game because of me. Thanks, man. Yeah, I hope I... The, the game is very basic. I don't know. If you just follow these three easy steps, you'll win every time. <laughs> yeah, it's not hard. Your cousin retired 05 because he didn't want the bureaucracy anymore. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about, man. I, I feel bad. You know, I, I'll say, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of good officers become very frustrated and in some cases even resign their uh, commission just because they've had enough of it. And uh, it's like that in the enlisted community, too. It's no different. It's just the pressures at the uh, 05 level. I guess there are different pressures. That part's different. But it's funny, as you get higher and higher in rank, even for us enlisted people, it really does matter who you know. It, it certainly does. And not just who you know, but who who you know that likes you. Because uh, there were some people that knew me that I didn't know them, and they did not like me, even though we had never met. <laughs> yeah. Probably something to do with transmitting active sonar in the middle of the goddamn Atlantic, but that probably had something to do with it. Yeah. I was a little more famous than I realized when I was in the Navy, and not in a good way. I think I had a bad reputation. Um, because of my fuck-ups. My fuck-ups were monumental. <laughs> I fucked up in big ways. And they're like, oh, it's that guy again. He's up for promotion? Rejected. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah, my, my, my own shenanigans definitely... Um, Hurt, hurt my promotions. I should have retired at least one, if not two ranks higher than I did, but certainly one rank. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are you going to do? I moved on. Infamous. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I was infamous. Like, whenever people... Like, I started reporting to commands in the second half of my career where people already knew me. And I had no... I'd never met them before. And I was like, how do you know so much about me? Like, oh, we know. We know about you. <laughs> what are you going to do? I should be the Secretary of Navy. I, You know, I don't know. I actually believe the Secretary of Navy we have now is actually doing a good job. I think he's actually, you know, I don't know everything the guy does, but what he's doing now is okay. Uh, it's what I would be doing. Like, for instance, the big thing is... We have this huge naval fuel depot in Hawaii from like World War II, maybe even before World War II. Uh, and it's been leaking oil, gasoline, oil, whatever you want to call it, into the drinking water of Hawaii for years. And I guess the Navy knew about it and didn't really do anything about it. I don't know the whole story, but so the secretary of the Navy uh, earlier this year, we even did a naval news story on it, said we're shutting the whole thing down. We're not just going to fix the leak. We're we're draining the fuel to other storage facilities, some of them stateside, and um, going to shut down the whole uh, facility because it's that bad. Plus, any kind of fix that they would do would be um, like a patch. It wouldn't be a permanent fix. So he was like, let's just shut it down. I thought that was a really good call. Yeah, so uh, I'm pretty happy with the current Secretary of the Navy. I'm playing my role... Uh, in this world, I, I think the way that I'm supposed to. I think I'm supposed to be an inspiration for some young people, which is nice. That makes me feel good. And uh, I'd rather play video games and have fun. Create naval news videos for you guys than have actual responsibilities, you know. It's much more chill for me. Like, I don't think the Secretary of the Navy gets to work from home, you know. 
Con, helm, steady course. So there's the Juliet right there. We're gonna get in his baffles and shoot him. If he goes active, we're just gonna shoot. That's the plan. Uh, my reputation preceded me. It sounds like it did. And uh, I was so oblivious because this is in my 20s and 30s, right? I was so oblivious back then. Like, it didn't even dawn on me that it might be a bad thing. I was like, oh, well, that makes getting to know us easier because you already know me. Now all I got to do is get to know you, right? And that's as far as my thought process went. I didn't for a minute think that it was a negative thing. And looking back on it now, how many times I got passed over for promotion, I was like, Ooh, maybe it was a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It all worked out in the end, so. Just the journey to this point has been pretty crazy. Yeah, this is perfect. Look at this geometry. Take a goddamn photo. Someone screenshot this. Just don't send it to the Department of Justice or anything, okay? Just keep it. Keep, keep, keep it on your phone. This is what you want to do. Both these submarines have no idea I'm here. I'm about to blow them right to Mars. That's what's going to happen right now. They're going away. I could kill both of them if I wanted to, but I'm feeling generous. We're just going to kill the target, which is the Juliet. The Alpha, I expect the Alpha to run away. And if it does, we're going to lose him. Because that's like a 40 knot submarine. He's almost as fast as our torpedoes are. We're playing on realistic uh, difficulty there, backs. Perception is more important than reality. Uh, unfortunately, that can be the case, yeah. What's the full story on the frozen door? Uh, that story has gotten popular. I've told that story like every stream. Uh, over the past week. I don't know if I want to say it again. Uh, who do we have here? Cephalon Bound. Thank you for the tier one sub. I appreciate it. Welcome to the sub club. Are we in the baffles yet? Nope. Very close though. What's his bearing? 134 and we're course 182. So is that 50 degrees? Yeah, he's got another 10 degrees to go. So our one tripwire we have right now is if he goes active, we shoot immediately. No other tripwires. Uh, the other one would be, if I had to make a second tripwire, it would be if he maneuvers. Speed, course, doesn't matter. If he makes any changes in his current motion then we'll re we'll reevaluate but otherwise we're, we're about to fire very close okay we're in his baffles let's go ahead standard make turns for one five knots maneuvering eye con maneuvering making turns for one Alrighty, five and we're just knots. going to Shoot two one. Okay. Aye, sir. Easy peasy. <laughs> I should have an FAQ for war stories. All right. Hey, greetings, Bar Gunner. Good to see you, man. Derp said, "Is that a real CW stream without at least one Johnson maneuver?" <laughs> Yeah, there's no Johnson maneuver today. You're still shell shocked by the fact that the Vulcan first flew in the 50s. Uh, um, yeah, I'm still kind of surprised. That's that's a pretty uh, early time for that design. So that design, I think, is like ahead of its time. But if you think about it, that's also when we Americans started designing the B-52. When was the first flight of the B-52? Does anyone know? Sonar, launch transient from Sierra 1. Con, fire control, weapon there we acquired. go. All 
All right, we're going to keep that torpedo from coming back on us. Just steer it back on the Juliet. God, fire control, weapon countermeasure homing. Con sonar, noisemaker bearing, one, zero, three. I turned on the active on the torpedo to try and get through the uh, countermeasure. Trying to use the active sonar to get through the countermeasure. Crap. Con sonar lost contact. We got him. Sierra one, last bearing one. All right, let's get out of here. Make turns for three, three, nine. We are rolling. So first flight of the B-52 was in 1952 as well. Interesting that we developed those fighters, or bombers rather, at the same time. And the B-52 is still flying today? I don't think she's operational, but doesn't she like do ferry missions now for uh, ordnance? I think that's how we use the B-52 these days. Torpedo ejection could make a thermal layer. What are you talking about? That's not how it works. Chat's trying to debate me into talking about how things work. Not today, Putin. Those are the shots we just avoided. That's why we sped up to 15 knots. She's supposed to be operational until 2049. That's crazy. Like the airframes. Now, I don't know anything about airplanes. But my understanding is, is that there's a limited number of time that the airframe can be in the air because of stresses. Doesn't it weaken the frame of the airplane? And because of that, I thought that they would retire the B-52s. All right, yeah, there we go. Easiest game in the world. Pretty easy video game. We're waiting right now. The torpedo's got to be outside 15,000 yards to end the mission. So they're heading that way. We're heading this way as fast as we can go. It'll just be a few minutes. We can exit the mission. Yeah, I understand the B-52 is still being actively used, but I think her role now is not combat. I think she's doing other things. Of course, I could be wrong on that, too. I'm not an expert, but I really don't. Uh, the last time I saw a B-52 was bombing a bunch of ragheads off a hill in um, Afghanistan. Or was it Syria? It was one of those countries. Who cares? Not America. Two countries in this world. America, not America. Oh, crap. Okay, we got another vessel nearby. Hold on, let's uh, slow down and see if we can figure out. Did that Alpha not run away? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, I don't know where this was, but there was a video on uh, uh, what's it called? War footage. There's a channel on Reddit that has video of uh, modern conflicts. And some of the video goes back to like, you know, the Vietnam War. But there's a lot of recent video. And one of the recent videos on this war footage subreddit was a group of, uh, it looked like 10 or 15 uh, men with AK-47s, you know, running up this huge sand dune. It must have been 80 feet high. I imagine by the top, they were exhausted. And they were firing their AK-47s over the top. The next thing you know, the hilltop explodes. And the camera that gets blown over looks up and there's a goddamn B-52 like doing circles up there. Uh, B-52 was like dropping precision munitions on, uh, on these troops. It was fucking hilarious because they had no clue that the B-52 was even around. They were fighting their own fight with somebody over the top of that hill and got absolutely annihilated. Anyway, very interesting subreddit if you're into war, war footage. Just be careful what you watch because it can be really, really graphic. It's, it's very real. You know, it's not censored. So it's certainly not for everybody is my point. All right, that, I think that alpha turned around. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and 
turn towards him a little bit and see if we can Alpha regain him on the two, toad array. Zero, nine, zero, and where is the... I. We don't have a lair. Okay. So, changing depth really won't help us. But we'll, we'll turn towards him and see that. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Captain Crash. Yeah, this is an unmodded video game. This is straight off Steam and installed. <laughs> Derp, I like your definition. There's countries that put a man on a moon and those that have not. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, so be careful. If those of you that are not familiar with Reddit, I honestly cannot recommend that website to anybody that doesn't already know about it because it's very toxic. So don't don't infect yourself with that kind of poison. <clears throat> but there are a few gems in the pile of crap that is Reddit that are worth your time if you're into those topics. Oh, let's see. You found a cat in your engine compartment? What? I didn't know they made vehicle engines. There we go. Yeah. R slash awe. That's, that's a good one. Especially if you're a cat lover. Any kind of pet lover, but especially cat lovers. They post a lot of photos there. That's, that's a good one. Con, helm, steady course. Can we not? Yeah, this guy, the, the alpha ran away like I thought. That's what, that's what he gets. Hey, what did we get? We got the green one. Thank you, Admiral. So we got the star and the green one. Adding to our hardware. All right, let's continue on course. Let's go get the submarine over here. Lots of, lots of submarines down there. Where, where'd he go? Uh-oh. Denmark got conquered. Aha! Here he comes. All right, so we have a new contact at 146. Designate Sierra 1. We're at periscope depth right now heading 228. So he's on the left-hand side of the submarine. No surface duct again. No thermal layer. No problem. Let's actually reload our weapons. Okay, the weapons are reloaded this time. Down our new contact new con Let's go to the ultra quiet. We're just going to wait a few minutes. And uh, let's sonar collect data for a few minutes and then, and then we'll make our maneuver. That's how we'll do this one. Cat generators can be used to power some military vehicles. Don't ask me which. Okay, pew pistol. Getting dark outside. I think we're going to get some rain up here. I've been thinking about moving the camera. I think we're going to move the camera from over there to being more straight on. <coughs> I like it being at the side because I wear hats. And if it's straight on, you, know, you guys won't see my face. Hardly, unless I bring it down. I can't bring it down too much because the monitor's in the way. I don't know, but I'm thinking about moving that camera right there. Let's see if it looks any different. The music reminds you of the Knight Rider theme song. Yeah, I think he's taken a lot of inspiration from all sorts of different things. Uh, the guy's name is Carl Casey and he runs the white bat audio YouTube page. So check him out. If you like the music, he's got a whole bunch of videos. Like some of them are hour long music riffs, you know, pretty good stuff. All right. Let's see if we can identify Sierra one.
Look at that, it's a Nova. Con sonar, Sierra 1 is classified as submerged submarine. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is see which way is he going. Like, is this little marker going to start jumping this way? Or is it going to start jumping this way? Con sonar, new contact. Second Barry, contact. One, seven, one, designated he Sierra might have two. a friend. So we'll give Sonar a few more minutes on CR2. Let's see what we come up with. You want the camera to be zoomed in a bit? I don't know if my camera has zoom. I could probably zoom it in OBS. I'll have to see if I can do that. The problem with uh, the zoom right now is like it's sitting on top of a monitor. That's how far away my monitors are. I keep them all over here. Greater than arm distance away. <clears throat> he, wants, he wants my retinal data? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Sierra 2 is with him. Let's click on Sierra 2. Click on the submarine tab and just see which one of these. I hope it's not another alpha. Alphas are kind of, uh, it's a Victor. It's a Victor 1. Con sonar, Sierra 2 is classified as So this is interesting. Submarine. The Victor 1 is the higher value target. Faux show. Huh. So this is a type one nuclear submarine and a type three nuclear submarine. Charlie Victor. Yeah. What's type two? Fuck am I getting? It's type two. Yeah. Charlie Victor. And you got Yankee Delta. It's type two. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm getting old. I'm forgetting my submarine types. Holy crap. This is not good. Not a good sign. Type two, thank you, yeah. It took me a second there, Maniac. I went to type three and then I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right at all. That's what happens when you don't do this stuff for a while. You start forgetting the basics. I should play Cold Waters in my hot tub and call it a lukewarm stream. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got plans for the gym, it's just, I got to get the gym ready and then I also have to get my body ready. I'm working hard in the gym. I've been hitting the gym hard all summer long. Um, I've, I've worked out more this summer than I did. I've worked out as much this summer as I did in the Navy. Yeah. I've been in the gym three times a week for a minimum of two hours and I don't even watch the clock. My gym doesn't have a clock. I get in there. I do my sets. And that's how I look at it. I don't look at the clock. <clears throat> but yeah, I've been hitting it pretty hard. It's just, I don't know if it's an age thing or whatever it is. It's just, it's taking a long time to see the results, you know. But I knew it would. Like, I'm not, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not in this to get a quick in and out. This is a Come change of lifestyle two, for me. One, eight. What the fuck? No, no, no. Oh, no. We're at periscope depth, aren't we? Crap. Oh, boy. We fucked up. Are they going to go active now? If they go active, we're screwed. I forgot. That's two games in a row. I forgot we were at periscope depth. Oh, man. Your gym is a VESA. What's a VESA? I wish I lived near a military base because then I could use that gym. But I don't, so. Because the gyms on military bases are the nicest. I mean, they're right up there with Gold's Gym and any other kind of high-end gym you may think of. They have the best equipment. They have every piece of equipment in terms of machine weights and stuff. Passing 300 feet. They're all Con so good. Helm. Steady course. 
This is a rebrand of Golds. Oh, I didn't know Golds got bought out. Okay. There was a Golds gym that is uh, up in Traverse City. Was it Traverse City? Yeah, and it, and it was empty. Like, you know, it had gone out of business or something like that. But they still had the gold. Oh, no, it wasn't. That was down in Orlando. Okay. Ooh, my brain. Yeah. There was a Golds gym in Orlando. I'm sure there's more than one, but the one that was near where I lived... It was just an empty, looked like a box store that was empty. But I had the Gold's Gym logo Passing still up on the front doors. Feet. Yeah. Make so the whole reason why we went deep is because I wanted to go fast. Knots, so we're going to come up to 10 knots and we're going to steady out here. Maneuvering. Making turns for one. Okay, Passing so we can still... Feet. So this is a conundrum. You know, we could get in the baffles of the November and take it out. But where is this Victor? How? What's his range? That's really what we need to know. We've got the November dead to rights. We could get him at any time. What's going to complicate this attack is the victor. Portsmouth gym was good. I agree. <clears throat> Spent a lot of time in that. The one thing I didn't like about the Portsmouth gym is it was not near the barracks. Uh, when I was in. So. <clears throat> Looks like you just unzipped what? Firing point. What? HT1. Sometimes whenever I read chat, I don't know what to expect. Oh shit. <laughs> Helm's just doing whatever the hell Helm wants to do. Stop changing depth, Helm. He's like, wee, this is fun. Gold's got in trouble for not allowing people to cancel their subscriptions. What? Really? How do you not allow someone? Oh, maybe because it's a contract. Like if you subscribe, if it's not month to month and you sign a year long contract, I could see that being a problem because it is a contract. The gym that we used to go to um, was month to month. It was, uh, it was like 24 hour fitness or something like that. And that was a cancel any time, you know. Like, the only reason why we didn't cancel it is we had to go in to cancel it. We never went to the gym. So, we're just like, we'll cancel it next month. We're not going to the gym this month. Yeah. Tell your helmsman to stop drinking the torpedo juice. I know, right? It's okay. It was only a couple hundred feet. <clears throat> Oh, really? Why is Sierra 2 cavitating? And why is November changing course? This is not good. What's going on, guys? Why is everyone freaking out? All they, if they go actively shoot, we're going to set that tripwire right now. We're going to get tubes 1 and 2 ready. We're going back deep again intentionally. That's not an accident, by the way. So the November sped up and maneuvered. Passing 700 feet. Let's go ahead and level out. Now we slowing back down again. What is, feet. what is he doing? Once we're in his baffles, we're going to... If we shoot at the November, the <coughs> Victor will shoot at us. I think. We really need a course. I don't necessarily need the range right now. I just need to know where is the Victor going. And he's been bouncing around here. It looks like he's closing us. Is he headed north? <clears throat> so if the Victor's headed north, what do we do? We got to head west. If we head west, where does that put the November? 14,000 yards and growing. All right, so what's the bearing to the uh, November? So let's take his bearing. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll, we'll round it up and say he bears 100. Let's add 100 degrees to that, 200. So we'll come right to course, left rather to course 200. God, that's not much. We got to go farther than that. 
All right, let's go uh, 220. Yeah. Come right to Assuming two, the victor's two, going north, zero, we can shoot the November on course 220 and survive the counterfire from CR2. Okay. Once we're steady on course, we will shoot. And almost there. Two two zero. All right, let's go ahead and shoot the November. Con helm, steady course. Let's get ready to shoot the Victor in case he shoots. Con sonar, launch transit. He's right there. Oh, he's Sierra much closer two. than we thought. Con sonar, launch transit from Sierra two. All right, ahead uh, standard. Con sonar, launch transit from Sierra two. Con sonar, lost contact. Maneuvering. Right, five degrees rudder. One, five, not. He, the victor, is much closer than Sonar thinks. If I'd known he was that close, we would have waited on shooting. Oh, there's two contacts down there. What? There's two active sources down from CR2. All right, he's running away now. That's excellent. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Grab you. Put you right there. There we go. That's what I meant to do. Con sonar, new contact. All right, stay as she One, goes. Three. We need to drive outside three. the search cone of this torpedo. Con, sonar, There's CR3. Three. Okay. CR3 three. is a hostile bearing, one, uh, target three, as well. Seven. Contact faded. Active sonar from CR3. Con, sonar regained contact on CR3. Bearing 136. Con, sonar lost contact. Uh, three, let's see. Bond Derev says six, November's captain's faded. bottle or a bath of vodka. Rolled under the console. Maybe that's why he was turning. Okay, yeah, yeah. In real life, depth control better than cold waters? I don't know if it's better. It is what it is. Alright, Sonar keeps updating this range. Come on, Sonar. Oh, this is funny. This We're about to see friendly fire. Whoever CR3 was just killed John Victor. Sonar regained contact <laughs> on Sierra 3. Bearing oh, one, no. Three, four. No. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra oh, what? Three, last bearing. Okay. One, three, three, that Victor took that rated. torpedo to the face like a champ. Con sonar I'm just curious if it's damaged. On. Can we look Sierra at it? It three, is damaged, bearing. but it didn't one, sink. Three, two. What kind of what kind of torpedo was that? It doesn't sink a submarine. So CR three shot CR two in the face. <laughs> Oh boy. Underwater duck duck goose, yeah, kinda. Alright. Yeah, we'll just let Torpedo Tube search. Or Torpedo 2 rather, not tube. We'll let him do his active search. Cause I'm I don't really know where the November is anymore. He went into our baffles. Cause uh, I'm evading the shots from CR2. Oh, what? Did he shoot him again? Last bearing, one, three, zero. Contact breaking up. I think Sierra 3 shot Sierra 2 twice. Oh my god. I've never seen that. I've played this game for five years. And I've seen blue on blue before, but never two shots. That's hilarious. Hey, they 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 deserve each other. Alright, Sierra 2, Sierra 3. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Well, tube 2 found the target. Let's go ahead and slow Con. down. Let's see if we can regain this CR3. I would five, love to direct up. this one onto CR3. So let's do this. Oh, fuck. I, I was steering the wrong torpedo. 
Let's let's put this guy back on the. Oh my gosh. Con sonar regain there he is. On Sierra one. Bearing okay, so that zero, one's back on nine, track. One. Let's let's do this. I want to take tube one and steer it onto Sierra three, but I need a good range from sonar. So what we'll do is we'll click this. And uh, we'll try and figure out. It looks like an alpha. Oh no! Don't be an alpha. It is definitely an alpha. Okay. Con sonar. Sierra. So Sierra three is an alpha, racing around the universe. Submarine. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I'm just gonna match bearings. I'm gonna run this torpedo down the active bearing of. CR3. So I'm taking CR3 in the yellow direction that I'm getting from his active, and I'm running Torpedo Tube 1 right down that bearing. Looks like Con we're going to get a kill in the November. Sierra 1, last bearing, zero, nine, four. Contact breaking up. Yeah. Easiest game in the world right here. Crazy Ivan right there shooting another Ivan. I know, right? What a crazy... Uh, turn of events that is I, I need some kind of information on Sierra 3 I mean I know that he's running it says he says he's doing 21 knots which we don't know his range so I'm just sending tube 1 down that bearing until he finds something maybe I'll tweak his course just a little bit Noisemaker bearing. Aha, one, we got a two, position. Zero. Okay, we're gonna take tube one, run him towards the noisemaker. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Locked on to something. Very good. Bam. Easy day. Intravenous bacon, how's it going, man? Thanks for the eight-month resub. This is howdy howdy been a good while. Yeah, it has. It sure has. I do like this tactic where they run over their own noisemakers. That does work with these weapons. So uh, we'll see if I get lucky here and hit this alpha as he passes over his own noisemaker right Con there. Noise he dropped a second noisemaker. There one, we go. Nine. I'm going to steer this a little more to the right or left rather and just let it search again and see if we Con get lucky. Yeah, we got a little bit Sierra, lucky there. Three, last bearing, one, one, nine. Contact breaking up. Easy day. Bum, 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 bum. We got the Bronze Star. I think we got them all. Who's left? Here we go. Player two has entered the ring. All right, we have a new contact bearing 293, designate Sierra 1. We're at periscope depth 5 knots. With a weak surface duct at 143 feet, we can finally start playing with the environment. Yay. On sonar, new contact bearing. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Bum, bum. Jen Galax, how's it going? Or Jen Alex. I said Galax. Why did I call myself Drive Turkey? Um, that was my school bus driver did that. Yeah. So I thought it'd be a fun little internet YouTube channel to be called Drive Turkey. Yeah. I was one of the only white people to go to my school and ride my bus. Even the school bus driver, he was black too. He was like, sit your giant ass turkey down. Drive your turkey ass down. Like, okay. Come left to I was a knucklehead zero, on the school zero, bus. One. Helm, I. I eventually got banned from riding the school bus. I had to walk to school for a few years. Because I would stick my head out the window. You weren't supposed to do that. But the school buses in Central Florida in the 70s were very hot and uncomfortable. Passing 100 feet. So, get a little breeze, you need to stick your hand out, or stick your head out the window, catch a little bit of air. And if the school bus driver saw you doing that, you know, 
he'd tell your parents, he would tell the school. And if you got enough of those reports, they'd be like, hey, you can't use the school bus anymore. You got to walk to school now. So I walked to school for a couple years. Da, da, da. Vulcan Rider says you were the only black person. Yeah. So Vulcan Rider, you and I were like, we were the opposite. I was definitely the minority on my school bus. Yeah. But honestly, I didn't get picked on too much on the school bus. I mean, that, that, that wasn't the thing. It was just, I kept breaking the damn rules, sticking my hands out the window and stuff. That was a big no, no, you know, I mean, thinking about it now too. I mean, obviously you don't stick your hands out the window. You could, you could get hit by a truck or something. Right. I didn't know that back then. I was a kid. <laughs> Eventually they were like, just walk. Stop being an idiot. Okay. Come left to. All right, we're going to turn towards Sierra 1 and see what we got. Maybe spit 10 knots as well. Hey, you know what we should do? Let's uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Maneuvering eye. Let's go a little bit deeper. Maneuvering. Making turns for 1 0. You joined the submarines, there was no temptation. Passing 300 feet. I joined submarines so that, oh to stick my head out the window. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Yeah, I joined submarines because um, there was a couple reasons. One, in the late 80s, right before I signed up, it looked like the Cold War could go hot. And I was like, what's my best chance of survival? And I was like, probably not being on a ship. I think if we're under the ocean, we're going to have a better chance to survive. Yeah. I was I was literally thinking those thoughts at the age of 18. Now, how did I come to that determination? You know, what... 16 17 year old Aaron what what affected me the years leading up to me uh, joining the Navy and it was Tom Clancy's novels I had read Hunt for Red October my freshman year of high school and I read um, Red Storm Rising after that and those two novels put in into my head that the submarine had a much better chance of surviving than any surface ship or airplane and so that was really the seed. Uh, but if you want to go back even further, I remember some movies coming on television uh, really shaped me. One of them was called Enemy Below. And this movie's still available. Uh, I think uh, Rock Hudson plays an American destroyer captain. And it's a one on one surface ship versus submarine um, battle, I think, during World War II is when it's set. So it's a German submarine. And it's really, really intense. And um, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. Got to watch it. Really good movie. It's called The Enemy Below. That greatly affected my uh, service choice. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Watching that movie, I was like, that's a pretty cool fight. Machine versus machine. I kind of like that stuff. All right, let's see what Sierra One is. Uh, can I match these up? Could be that. Oh my word! All right, let's slow down and see if we can get better sonar Make signal. Four, five, oh, it nine. was Robert Mitchum. Thank you for correcting me there, Alonzo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Absolutely right. Sequest did that to you. Oh, Sequest lied to you. <laughs> no, no talking dolphins. Dolphins talk a lot. They are some chatty, chatty people, or animals. Con maneuvering, making yeah. turns. For dolphins are very curious nine. too. They'll swim right up to the submarine. Yeah, that's they're very cool. Whales are a little more like large whales. They kind of don't care. Large whales are just doing whatever large whales do. One thing I will say is they do not like active sonar. Yeah. Which was a shame because as a sonar man, I loved active sonar. I wanted to transmit active anytime I could and the few times when I wasn't allowed to. The problem with it is it gave you away, so. I mean, that's a real downside, I suppose. That's not another Juliet. Con sonar. But, one is oh one man, I remember I got submarine. on this one submarine, one of my commands. I was a new guy, too. Damn it. This is, this is a really painful story to tell, but here we go. Buckle up. <laughs> so um, I'm, I've been on board about a month. I've requalified all my watch stations, so 
just settling into my new command. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna start training these guys on how to use active sonar. Here's, here's my thought process. These guys in front of me, in my watch section, I'm sonar supervisor, I got four operators in front of me, we've got consoles in front of them, and they don't even know what the active sonar formula is, like the simple basic math formula. They don't know what the sonar display looks like, they don't know the modes, and these guys are on a submarine with active sonar. I'm like, you don't even know what your own system looks like, much less how it operates? I was like, all right, I'm gonna fix this. So I go out to the officer of the deck and we're underway. I'm like, listen, cross mission transmit active sonar, uh, I'm gonna do for, for training. And he looked at me like I was from Mars. He was like, you wanna make noise? You're a sonar man, why, 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 why you wanna make noise? I was like, listen, these guys got to take rating exams that if they score high enough, they get promoted in rank. A big part of that rating exam is how to use your sonar system. And that sonar system includes active employment, like the freaking formula, you know, and what the displays and the modes are. And I was like, listen, it's going to help these sailors out if we transmit active sonar. We're not on mission. We're tooling around here in the middle of the Atlantic, having a good time. Let's kill some fish. All right, let's do this. And um, so they gave me permission to do it. Sure enough, line up transmit active sonar. And uh, the guy, they start hitting the buttons and I'm like, and I'm explaining the modes to them. Not gonna go into that obviously. And so after I explain everything to them, we begin transmitting. And uh, transmit fails, transmit fail, transmit fail. I'm like, what the hell's going on? I bring up diagnostics. The whole goddamn active side of the house is, is red on diagnostics. And I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, sending the AUGS operator. I'm like, go to CSCS and make sure that shit is not on fire. <laughs> because they had not transmitted active sonar or done any maintenance on the entire half of the sonar system that did active sonar for years. Nobody could tell me the last time they had ever done it. Um, going back many, many crew rotations, like all the people that were there now of this 12 man division had never transmitted active sonar at this command. <laughs> I'm like, there's requirements for maintenance. You gotta do that every once in a while. They didn't do any of that shit. We almost burnt the fucking submarine down because uh, the amplifiers that get very hot whenever you start transmitting all this voltage down into the sonar sphere, Jesus Christ. Uh, they were full of, uh, what do we call them? Ghost turds, uh, dust balls were all in the amplifiers sparking and like glowing that this dust was just like burning. Um, and you could, it was smelling up the submarine too. So after a couple attempts of trying to transmit sonar and it not working because it was fucking shorting out the amplifiers, <laughs> I sent the ox operator over there and he was like, he came back pale as fuck. And he was from India. And he looks like a ghost and he's like, I think there's a problem with the sonar system. And yeah, so we spent at least a week. Oh my God. We were cleaning the amplifiers and this is row after row after row of amplifiers. Um, oh, and I, I was the new sonarman too. I almost burnt down the fucking submarine. Probably another reason why I didn't get promoted, but those knuckleheads needed to be doing their maintenance. And that was a whole thing about people not doing maintenance. And so anyway, we we racked out off watch. We didn't get any sleep for a long time. We racked out all the amplifiers, vacuumed up all the dirt, caught up all the maintenance. There was a huge like in command investigation. Yeah, it was a mess. But there's a problem whenever you're the person in the Navy that finds the problem, you are by association implicated as being part of the problem. Uh, yeah. Sonar. Sierra, come left to oh, it was two, a tango. Seven, zero, yeah, L yeah, nine. yeah. God, that sonar system was nasty. Like pulling out the amplifiers were, you pull them, pulled the drawers out, and dust was like poof. It was like little confetti bombs, you know, like gender reveals everywhere every time we wrecked out a fucking amplifier. Yeah. It's a boy. It's a fire. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, just another reason why I didn't get promoted. We're maneuvering into the Tango's baffles here. 
and we're gonna rig ship for ultra quiet. Rig for ultra quiet because we are a lot closer than I meant to get. We're inside five thousand yards again, so we're gonna let him open out a little bit. Promoted to what? Promoted at all? <laughs> seaman recruit. Get, I, I need to get promoted to seaman recruit. Yeah, they're high power amplifiers. Yeah, and uh, I don't want to get into how it works, but. You know, obviously, if the signal doesn't go through all the amplifiers, it fails. And that's what it was doing. And we were lucky every time we tried to transmit. We Oh, shit. Oh, he turned towards us. This is bad. I'll stop. Turns for zero knots. We are going to make like a hole in the water. We're rigged for silent running. I'll stop. This damn tango's coming right at us. Let's get the decoy ready. Yeah. The problem with doing that too is on the boat that I was on, those active amplifiers were right outside the exo stateroom. <laughs> Now that it's all kind of coming together now now that I'm talking about it I'm like he didn't have a door and then when he did have a door it was broken it was leaking he's mad at me and I set the amplifiers on fire oh yeah that, that'd be why okay that's that's why he didn't like me mystery solved like I, I'm telling you guys I did not screw up often in my career but when I did I did it big I I oh, I did things other people dare not screw up. Yeah, there was the cob that hated my guts for no reason. This was that command. So <laughs> I, I'm slowly unraveling the reasons from my memory. I'm like maybe it was that, but he, that cob didn't like me from week one. Like our first five days together were pretty normal. And then something happened where he flipped the script on me. This guy's close. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. You're still uh, given for that 100 tag out. Oh yeah. Now, okay. That that that, that was a different command. Yeah, I, I hadn't done a tag out in like nine months, and I'd kind of forgotten how to do them. But I was also one of the most senior sonarmen on board that command, um, in terms of time on board, not rank. And so they were like, uh, "We got to hang these divers tags again." Let's make sure we don't screw this up. Let's get someone that knows what they're doing. Who's been here the longest. Okay, you do them. That's kind of how that selection process went. And I was like, all right, just act like you know what you're doing. And I fucked it up. I fucked it up so bad that the divers came down to double check our work. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh. I sir, Con. Fire control. Weapon acquired. Yep. Run, run, run. Con, sonar. Launch transient from Sierra 1. Turns for one, the decoy ready. Zero knots. Maneuvering eye. Con maneuvering. Making turns for one zero knots. Make turns for three three knots. Maneuvering eye. Yeah, so the divers were not happy. They actually came to me and said, listen, fix all of this. Normally, if the divers find something uh, wrong, God, like they'll, they'll take it to the command and get you in trouble. They found so many things wrong 
that they decided to just like tell me about it, you know, Con, and not get me in trouble, which Passing was actually pretty nice of them doing that. Con sonar, we are cavitating. Yep. Passing 500 feet. Nope. Oh, get back in there. Uh, Make turns for zero. Con sonar, no longer cavitating. No longer cavitating. Anyhow. Did I poop a little? Um, no. It's been a fat minute uh, for who? Intravenous bacon. So, but I think the range in which the AI auto detects things. Yeah, I don't know. That was pretty realistic. He was really close to me. You know, at some point, no matter how bad your sonar system is, you're going you're gonna to detect it. Con, torpedo room. All right, we're going to have to shoot this ready. decoy. Um... Let's do this. We're gonna shoot it this direction. Uh, yeah. Let's reload it. And let's go. Make turns for three. Three con sonar. We are cavitating. I don't really care about the cavitation too much. I probably should have shot that decoy deep. That was a. Uh, I could have done that one better. Yeah, it's funny how we remember all the mistakes we make, right? <laughs> I sit here and tell you about all the things I screwed up in the 20-year career. Passing and it sounds like, feet. you know, things went really, really wrong in my career. But that's just because we talk about the funny negative things. Let's see if he locks onto that target. How far away are we? This is interesting timing. Yeah, that torpedo is going to get a good look at us, isn't he? We need that other decoy. This torpedo might actually lock onto us right here. And if he does, we'll shoot him in the face. Well, let's see, Con, let's see. Torpedo room, tube four ready. Okay, tube four is ready, decoy's ready. That torpedo did not lock onto us, which is great. Okay. I thought he would. Yeah, I had gold stripes. Yep. I never went to the green table. As much as I screwed up in my career, I never went to Captain's Mast. And uh, that's really shocking, actually. <laughs> I probably should have on at least one occasion, especially the dive out for the diver's tags. Because that's a safety thing. Yeah, anytime you do a safety violation, you're probably going to at least talk to the captain about it. You may not lose a rank, but you're at least going to talk to the captain over a green table about it. Yeah. The only reason why that didn't happen is those divers, for whatever reason, came to me on board because I was, I was, it was like seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night, and they were like shoving this back in my chest. They were like, fix your stuff. And I knew what they were talking about. I had no idea what I was doing. And every single tag, it seemed like was, yeah, it was hung on the right component, right breaker, uh, but the, the signatures were all jacked up. Like the, 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 the documentation was jacked up. So. Yeah. That one I probably could have easily gone to Captain's Mass for, and I didn't. All the other things were kind of, eh. That's him fucking up again, you know. <laughs> well, let's see. See, last week you got to pin on your Navy's um, pin officer five, second class. Very good, Alcinor. Man, proud of you, but. Oh, did that message get held? What the hell? Freaking. You know, I fixed the, um, if you guys noticed, the bot is not as strict as it used to be. But for some reason it, oh, it's because of your, that PO5 could mean something else. Okay. That's what that was. I just realized I need to close that window because you guys can see the sunlight. It's like, hmm. It's actually really cloudy today, but it looks really bright on stream. Alrighty. Yeah, we're just gonna outrun these weapons.
Hey, Outer Exodus, how's it going, man? This is your brain on info screen. What? You talking about that one? Oh, you're talking about the glare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll fix that. I didn't realize how bright it was until just now when I looked at it on the stream. I really want to move the camera too. I'm probably gonna move the camera up there just for a little bit and just see if it, it's better. Yeah, let's get out of here. There we go. Nice. All right, folks, we are gonna call it a day right here. Pretty good stream today. What, three hours? Yeah, yeah, long time. So uh, we will see you guys again on Wednesday. It's when the next time I plan on streaming. Uh, I'm writing the next subbrief right now. I have not announced uh, what ship it is, other than it's going to be a ship. And um, yeah, that's great. Uh, whenever the gym is ready, which could be a couple months, maybe we'll do a gym stream because I've got it set up to where I can work out. We can listen to this copyright free music and we can chat and uh, I'll get my workout in instead of playing uh, cold waters or whatever else it is we're doing so anyway overall really good day One hundred twenty thousand tons sunk i think we came in today with eighty thousand tons so we added another what 60 or 40 40 tons to that good stuff good stuff all right let's see who is uh out there who's streaming and we're gonna we're gonna raid that channel okay so just bear with me while we look at my friends list on twitch 